Hello. Well, this video is going to be a little different from my previous video. I'm not certain if you saw my previous video, uh, but I did one uh, using the SP32's uh, LoRa radios to monitor uh, uh, orchards. Uh, this time around, I'm going to be using to monitor a uh, clean in place uh, application using Amazon Web Services or the cloud to broker the messages uh, from this gateway that, that you're seeing here. And all the ESP32s are Wi-Fi compatible. You can see the coiled Wi-Fi antenna on this particular uh, uh, processor, along with battery packs supplying the power. I mean, this is allowing me to go to World Wide Web. Then using the MQTT protocol over Amazon Web Services, I subscribe and publish messages uh, to another remote ESP32, which I'll, I'll show you in a few minutes. In this particular application, though, I'm monitoring a uh, fictitious dairy's clean in place or CIP process. On the server side, I'm communicating over Modbus TCP from this particular gateway to a SCADA or Graphical Supervisor and Data Acquisition Program. Um, this is why it, the dual core processor um, on this controller is so important. Uh, it's allowing me to communicate over Wi-Fi, but at the same time, I'm also communicating over Modbus TCP IP protocol to the server. Here you can see the ESP32 remote node that would normally be located in a dairy barn. It's not on my desktop as seen here with availability to a network. I'm using it to control the start, stop, and timing of the CIP cleaning processes, as well as monitoring the chemical temperatures and levels of the tanks. I have four interposing 10 amp relays connected to this ESP IO. On the secondary side of these relays, I'm latching coils on these contactors. These could be starters or digital signals to variable frequency drives or soft starts to control the tank pumps. For this application, I'm using four IEC contactors with 24 volt AC coils coming off the step down transformer. These aren't starters, so I'm using this little red button shown here to simulate a fault on the rinse process pump only. I don't have these chemical tanks in my garage. So to simulate the tank levels and temperatures, I'm using random number generator routines in this node program to publish those variables. This is the uh, graphical interface for this application. Now, here you can see a dairy milking parlor, and I'm setting the times and monitoring the clean and place processes of the pipes and the milking equipment in it. I decided to use a SCADA program for better control and monitoring. I, I think for this project, it's actually less expensive than using a full-blown cloud application. Amazon charges per use of functionality and time used. I'm only using AWS's subscribe and publish or MQTT functionality. The name of this fictitious dairy is Marlet. It's, it's actually the name of a text font I found. Uh, I'm not doing anything with the actual milk production. The only reason I'm showing the cows is to show if we're milking or running in the CIP process. I want to do this program because I used to sell automation into the dairy industry, and one of the requests was for programming the actual timing of the processes. And I just wanted to see if I could do it using a microcontroller. I mean, the whole application is farcical anyway. These large co-op dairies are milking thousands of cows or, or more a day. In these instances, a programmable logic controller is a lot more practical. It has more I.O., internal memory, and functionality than the ESP32s have. But COVID and my interest in microcontrollers and SCADA drove me to try it anyway. I never got involved in the processes themselves. So I took a lot of liberties in this application. I'm pretty sure I'll hear about it in the comments. You can see the chemical storage tanks here that I'm monitoring, showing the levels and temperatures coming in from the remote node uh, via MQTT that I showed earlier. In the rinse tank, I'm also monitoring water turbidity or how dirty it is. I use the uh, turbidity of 20%. If the turbidity is less than 20, it's recyclable and it goes back in the tank. If not, it goes to the, to the, to the drain. If I hit the uh, schedule CIP hours or clean in place hours, it brings a uh, pop-up box. You can see in the left corner, this is all coming out of my database, uh, the uh, days and the hours that I've got scheduled in the process uh, times. Um, so I can come in here, right now it's Sunday. I can come in here and click upload Monday and it gives me everything I've got scheduled uh, for Monday. These will uh, run at the top of uh, each hour, so I can uncheck the uh, 12 a.m. or 
11 a.m. and edit this, uh, the hours of when I want to run it. Normally, the dairy would run it maybe once or uh, twice a day. I've got these checked just for test purposes. And then I can come over here, and uh, these are the process times, the actual times that each process is going to run. So I'm running rinse cycle first, uh, and actually I'm running the acid cycle second, uh, caustic, and then finally the sanitizer. I believe that's the cycle sequence. Uh, like I say, I'm taking liberties with this. Uh, but I could come in here and... Uh, change that to say five this is five milliseconds and uh, the total times can't exceed an hour because I, I may don't know why but I might want to consecutively run these uh, 12 a.m. and 1 a.m. so uh, these have to be off uh, at the top of each hour and then I can come in here and save this to the uh, database I'm saving Monday and then I return to the main screen I'm back in the main page and at the top, you can see the tanks uh, that I'm monitoring, rinse water, caustic acid sanitizer, and you can see uh, the temperatures. I don't, I'm not sure what the temperatures should actually be. These, I'm taking liberty on these. Um, tank levels and turbidity, uh, again, I'm using 20%, and I'm not sure if that's correct either, uh, just for uh, show purposes. 20% uh, less is recyclable and anything above 20 uh, will go through the drain. And the way I'm getting these values is uh, through uh, AWS's MQTT from my remote node. If I come in here to my Arduino IDE, you can see a list of, of what I'm publishing to and subscribing from. And for the tank values, this is the topic right here. And I come in here to the internet to my browser and I bring up uh, AWS's uh, test site. I come down here, you can see this is a page for MQTT's test client and I'm subscribing to that topic I just showed you. And this is what's coming in from that uh, remote node. Then these are all random values. It's giving me uh, the time when these were, were published. Come back over here to my main screen and I've got a little header set up here. This is giving me time and date, CIP. Uh, this is telling me what mode I'm in. So I have manual off or auto and the processes, which process I'm, I'm currently running and you'll, you'll see this lit up anyway, uh, but it'll tell you which, uh, which process is running and any alarm in that process that comes up. And again, this button will take you to the uh, scheduling for the hours. This is my dialog box for my alarms. I'm only monitoring the uh, rinse water turbidity and uh, I have that little red button that I'm using for uh, my overload on that contactor. So I'm getting a uh, false signal coming in from there on my rinse cycle. One thing I want to show you uh, where those values are coming from inside my uh, IDE, Arduino IDE code for the uh, gateway. If I come in here and open up my uh, input box from the IDE, uh, from the gateway, you can see the strings coming in. This is being uh, um, brought in from uh, MQTT uh, AWS. You can see, again, the, uh, the topic that I'm subscribed to, Marlette Tank Values, and this is the string that's coming in. And I parse this in the IDE and then through Modbus TCP IP, I bring it up to the SCADA. And then these are the values uh, that are published. If you come over here to my MCC, you can see I've got a uh, three position selector switch. I've got manual, off, and auto. If I hit manual, it unveils my four push buttons for my processes. So I can start these, start and stop these individually. If I hit rinse, you can hear the uh, contactor latch in the background. Now, it's pretty quick. That's going through AWS's uh, MQTT, uh, although it's in the same room. If I come back to my uh, AWS test page, my MQTT test client, you can see where the message was sent. And... Um, 
here it sent uh, so it's telling me that this is process one the state should be on I'm in manual mode if if this was two it would be auto mode and there would be a time in here and the Delta is what's coming back to my gateway to my SCADA and you can see that the topic is um, shadow update and what this is this is a routine in AWS that uh, um, if the internet should go down or the app goes offline for some reason the shadow routine keeps track of the last state there's three states current state delta state and the requested state the current state is what's actually running now the desired state is a newly requested state so as i say if the internet should go down or the app goes down and then comes back up uh, the delta state remembers what was requested if the current state is different than the delta the current state then becomes the uh, becomes the delta state uh, i'm not going to get into the aws M maybe another uh, video i don't i don't have enough time to to, to get in um, to aws is all all the uh, routines that are available here um so if i come back in here and uh, that little red button i had if i hit that to create a fault in the overload um, you can see that the, you can hear the contactor shut off and I should get a uh, um, now acknowledge that, that indeed we were in a uh, trip state and here you can see the MCC lit up and the message is coming that we have a uh, uh, rinse water pump fault and the motor is actually flashing as well and it shows up here in my dialog uh, my fault dialog box and if I let me see if I bring that up in my AWS I think I've, I think I've subscribed to that and here you can see um, that uh, this is coming in I'm subscribing to this the overload one the rinse water rinse water um, pump motor is in uh, fault state and if I clear it come back in here and you can see that it's cleared the new message is stating that again rinse water is uh, one and the state is zero so the fault has been cleared And there seems to be a, a little bit of a delay for polling the, uh, the SCADA to my uh, ESP32. So it's, it's not shown that it's cleared yet. I certainly wouldn't uh, um, control faults over uh, MQTT AWS. Obviously, you'd want to control the fault at the... Uh, uh, location of the of the motor this is just indication but you can see I've, I've cleared here everything is off and it, it reset the rinse to off so uh, in order for me to uh, restart this again I, I have to hit that button if I come over here to my scheduled uh, clean in place uh, uh, hours scheduling um, I've got Monday set up if I upload it and I've got, it's after four o'clock right now. So I've got that scheduled. And uh, these are gonna be my times. Again, these are in milliseconds. I'm gonna save Monday, return to the main screen. Now I've got this set up in my code where as soon as I hit auto, uh, this is for test purposes. As soon as I hit auto, it'll, it'll run out auto instead of waiting for uh, top of the hour uh, just for display. So if I come in here and hit auto, and um, show my you can you can hear the process start now I'm in uh, rinse mode and this is uh, coming from SCADA to, uh, Modbus uh, to my gateway and then again to AWS you can see those times and I, I've got this uh, transposed to seconds so it's 
it's uh, um, rinse mode uh, off and now acid is running. Turbidity alarm. Turbidity zero, so I can I can uh, acknowledge this. Reset it. Again, currently running in acid mode. And you can hear the contactor latch, unlatch and latch. Skata hasn't got, uh, hasn't pulled the uh, gateway yet to make, there it goes. Now we're running caustic. Wait a few seconds. Shuts off. And now we're running sanitizer. Again, you can see uh, the, the uh, slugs cycling through the uh, milking apparatus here. And it should shut off um, here in a few seconds. There we go. It's a little bit of a delay um, from signaling off. And if I shut this off, um, that's about all I've got time for uh, in this video. I, I got another idea for, a, for another uh, application, or I can uh, show you the code in this. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet, but hopefully, uh, again, this uh, gave somebody some ideas out there um, on using uh, AWS and uh, ESP32s. So until, uh, until my next video, see ya.